We are delighted to be with you again today. Yes. Like we said in the last episode, we will be back with the concluding part of that story about Esau and Jacob. Remember, we shared with you the story of Jacob and Esau. Esau and Jacob we told. Yes. And today we want to look at what exactly happened to each of them. So the topic today is final play out of the blessing. Esau, Esau and Jacob. Now remember this year we're talking about how you can walk in that covenant relationship with God Amen. and experiencing the supernatural expansion. supernatural expansions by divine interventions. So today we will look at that story again. Remember when Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau came in, he was like one at least bless me and Isaac said no I don't have anything but said at least even if it is one, one. and that one Isaac gave him how did he use it my wife will be sharing with us so that we will see the blessing how it made the difference between the two of them again our text remains Leviticus 26 9 which we started the year with mm -hmm. and it says so I will turn toward you and make you fruitful and multiply you and I will confirm my covenant with you so I want you to follow the scripture follow this text and see how it has been playing out between these two twin brothers mm -hmm. and as we told you whichever situation you are in life how is, is life how is your destiny playing out mm -hmm. so uh, my queen, my love, let's discuss this, how the, the final play out, how did it play out between Esau and Jacob, Amen. the blessing, and how it relates to the covenant relationship we have with God today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, sir. And you're welcome again, brethren. It's always a pleasure and a blessing to share with you. Uh, the Holy Spirit is going to share with us today and he has some new insights mm. to give to us and we implore that each and every one of you come with an open mind. Let's look at the story of Esau and Jacob. We told, looking specifically now on the part two, the blessing between these two, the final play out. So, what exactly happened to Esau? What happened with the encounter between Jacob and Esau? And how did it finally play out in terms of the blessing? Let's read Genesis 33. Starting from verse 1, we will pick out some verses there till verse 9 using the Amplified. Then Jacob looked up. So, just giving a background, Jacob had been gone. Please go listen to the first uh, part, uh, as my husband had introduced to us. Um, Jacob had gone now to Laban, uh, Rebekah's brother, his uncle, and had been there for 20 long years. So now he was returning. Okay. So Jacob looked up and saw Esau coming with 400 men. So Jacob had been afraid knowing how he had left home because he knew the evil that had been done by himself and his mother to his brother by cheating him out of his blessing. And he was afraid because Esau had said, he would kill him. That was the state he had left home. And now he was returning. So we get the background. So he saw Esau coming with 400 men. 
So he divided his children, that's Jacob, among Leah, the first wife, and Rachel, the second wife, and the two other maids that had born children for him. Then Jacob crossed over the stream ahead of them, and notice, he bowed himself to the ground seven times bowing and moving forward each time until he approached his brother. In this passage, who was bowing to who? The blessing that had been given to Jacob passed down from Isaac to Jacob from Abraham was that his brother, Jacob's brother, would bow to him. And now we are reading in the scriptures that Jacob bowed seven times, five and two more, mm -hmm. seven times to approach his brother. But Esau, see what Esau did. As Jacob was busy bowing down and approaching him, Esau ran to meet him and embraced him and hugged his neck and kissed him and wept for joy. My brethren, Bible scholars, how, which two people does this act mm. immediately remind us of? Mm. Number one was the father of the prodigal son who forgave his son even before he returned and was looking out for him. And when he came, he ran and wept on his neck. The second person was Joseph, who forgave again his brothers who had done him wrong and wept on their necks. Hmm. So the maids approached with their children, that is the, the concubine wives of, of uh, Jacob. They approached with their children and they bowed down. Leah also approached with her children and they bowed down. Every member of Jacob's family bowed to Esau. Hmm. Afterward, Joseph and Rachel approached and they bowed down. Esau asked, what do you mean by all this company that I have met? And he answered, these are to find favor in the sight of my Lord. Jacob called Esau. Lord. But Esau said, I have plenty, my brother. I'll take that again. How did the blessing finally play out for both of them? We are looking at Esau. We read in the beginning of this chapter 33, he came with 400 men, not boys. These were men that were well built, well tutored, well skilled in war. These were men, not children. He came with 400 men. And he probably had more at home. These were the ones he journeyed with. And he said, I have plenty. Hallelujah. My brother. He said, keep what you have for yourself. He looked at all that Jacob had at that time. And he didn't think it was for him to take of it. He said, keep everything you have for yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. So now let's look. My love, we're going to be talking about the lessons mm -hmm. that we will learn from these two brothers mm -hmm. as we relate to the blessing, how it played out at the end of their days, mm -hmm. and how uh, things that we should learn to do mm -hmm. and things not to do. Amen. In working with God and the covenant that he has made with us and will yet make with us in this 2022. Amen. So number one lesson. To build a solid foundation in the home, it must be void of deception and manipulation. And this is talking about Rebecca and Isaac. Because they needed to share more with each other. Rebecca and Isaac needed to share more with each other. Isaac did not exemplify oneness 
when he alone went to pray on the behalf of Rebecca's barrenness. The scripture did not tell us they sat together and said, you know, this lack of having a child, mm -hmm. we need to see God's face. Mm -hmm. No, but the scripture tells us Isaac went to pray on his own, on behalf of Rebecca. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, what happened? Rebecca also did not share her feeling of the war in her belly mm -hmm. with Isaac. Neither did she tell him what God had told her. At least we are not told. Still under that number one uh, lesson of not manipulating or being deceptive in the home, Rebecca was manipulative and deceptive, which is what she taught Jacob and displayed to Esau. Both of them were her children. She loved one more than the other. And in her relationship with the one that she loved, she taught him how to manipulate. Little wonder she's coming from a family of manipulators mm -hmm. anyway. Because we later would read we, about uh, Laban, mm -hmm. her brother, mm -hmm. and how he cheated Jacob out of many things in doing business with Jacob. Mm -hmm. That was Rebecca's family. And that was what she taught to her son, Jacob. So one must be careful what foundation one is laying. Number two lesson, be discerning enough to identify your enemy and not be unguarded when your enemy is around you. Esau never realized or saw Rebecca, his mother, as a threat. He always allowed her into his space at crucial times and she betrayed him all of those times. Last episode, we had talked about how uh, Rebecca was there when Isaac was telling him about the plans to bless him. Esau did not feel threatened to say, no, shh, my father, uh, let me be sure the, the coast is clear before you talk to me. No, he relaxed and the father told him all about the blessing in the, in, in, uh, while Rebecca had access to both of them. Uh, not only that, he was so trusting that he kept some of his best clothes with Rebecca, which he later used against him by putting them on his brother Jacob. You can go and read that account in Genesis 27, chapters 27 and 28. You know? So, uh, all these are things that we should watch out for. Number three lesson, Esau was a son who honored and loved his parents. We were never told that Esau had anything against Rebecca. He loved both his parents. And how do we know? Number one, because he listened to their instructions and because of that, things turned out right for him. Isaac told him to make the venison. And he did. That's Esau. Esau realized his parents did not like the wives he had married when they were talking about Jacob not taking a wife of the same tribes that he had married from. And when he realized this for the first time, he married another wife. How be it? It was Ishmael's daughter. So, but the moment he realized what they did not like, he moved to make amends. This shows us, my love, you, yeah. you want to no, say, just wanted to father say to, to son no, here. Our, our, to our brethren that are listening, yes. if you are in a privileged position to disciple your son, mm. as a mother to disciple your daughter, it's not just the benefits that you get from them. Also, tell them the truth. You will wonder, the scripture says, Isaac loved to eat the wild games that uh, Esau was always killing for him. So there was never a time he sat him down to tell him about the inheritance, the blessing, and the right things to do. Don't marry uh, from this yeah. tribe. This is the way to go about God's blessings. Yes. He was just eating of his venison. So, what's your relationship like with your own son, with your own daughter? Like my wife said, the last point she mentioned, 
Rebecca was around, eavesdropping or within the earshot of the conversation. Isaiah says, will a mother, mm. you know, forsake or forget her own child? But we find out here, Rebecca literally fulfilled what Isaiah was warning every one of us about. There are some mothers who would forsake or forget the suckling they gave to their child in order to achieve their own inordinate ambition. Mm. So, my love, those are things about parenting which we see, as you are saying, that uh, Isaac and Rebecca, they dropped the ball here in plenty of ways. So, let's, let's, let's continue. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. So, still on this uh, number three lesson of Esau, a son who honored and loved his parents, uh, he also was told by Isaac, his father, to forgive and never allow hatred in his heart so that he would prosper. Because when he cried, I mean, with bitterness in his heart, when he realized his brother had just been there to take his blessing, he felt bitterness, he felt hate, and he was angry. And when he asked for that one blessing and the father gave it to him saying look you will be great but by your sword it's not going to come by favor neither is it going to come by grace as that is the blessing that has been given to your brother he asked him to forgive jacob you might wonder where did that where is that in the bible that my wife is saying you remember regarding of the translation you are using isaac clearly told him that the yoke is upon your neck yes. and when it is time you will break the yoke yes. off your neck yes breaking of the yoke off his neck is tantamount to him forgiving his brother Amen. leaving the whole incident to let go and facing relying on that sword the, the, the only blessing that the father gave him it was on that platform of forgiveness yes. that he was able to prosper in whatever he sets his heart to do. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And that shows how important forgiveness is. We'll still talk about that. Mm -hmm. So, um, yes, thank you for that, my Lord. Mm -hmm. um, so, we are now on lesson number four. The above show that when we teach our children in the way they should go, they will not depart from it. Rebecca taught Jacob to be cunning, deceptive. He didn't depart from it until the Lord met with him. The, uh, Esau was not taught anything of his father. Zero in, zero out. Mm -hmm. Amen. So, lesson number five. Jacob was taught deception and manipulations by his mother and he was fed that all his youth. So he stole his brother's birthright and also he stole his brother's blessing. Lesson number six, give the right names to your children. Give the right names to your children. Choose it carefully. Jacob only answered to what he was called, the supplanter. That was the meaning of his name. And that's what Esau said in the passage uh, in Genesis, saying, oh, is, is he not just answering to his name? His name is the supplanter. He has stolen again my blessing, just as he stole my birthright. Lesson number seven. Esau did make it. Amen. Esau, contrary to how many stories we were told, how black and evil Esau was painted. Esau forgave. Esau removed anger from his life and bitterness and received the one blessing that was placed on him. He made it big. Forgiveness is key. He had 400 men and much property according to his account, as we read in Genesis 33. And by the way, that was the amplified version. Lesson number eight, Jacob bowed to him seven times. And so did his family, Jacob's family. 
He also called him Lord at least twice. Was the blessing evened out at this point? Hmm. Note that the original blessing said Esau would bow to Jacob and serve him. But when Esau forgave Jacob and let go of his hatred, and that yoke, like you said, my Lord, mm. was broken off of Esau's neck, things changed for Esau. However, the difference in the blessing each ended up with was that Esau's blessing came by his strength. Esau's blessing came by his sword, but it was after he had forgiven his brother. On the other hand, Jacob's blessing is generational. Amen. Jacob's lesson, blessing comes by grace and favor. You and I are still partakers of Jacob's blessing today. So, lesson number nine. When we walk in truth, we can rewrite our own story. And lesson number 10. Finally, it pays to start off with the Lord and stay with the Lord. It pays to run the race God's way. Then there will be less or no detours. There will be no wasted years or agony. Remember Jacob? Go read his story with how he lived his life with labor for 20 years. And remember, as we said in the last episode, that the Lord had told him in Genesis 28, I believe, when he told him, he said, this is the land and I will bring you back. But like my husband said last episode, Jacob was uh, focused on things that, on things, things he could get. Food to eat now. Yes. Uh, you know, daily things. Yes. Uh, rather than looking and meditating on how that wholesome yes. prosperity. Yes, eternal things, generational things. Become his mm. immediately. Eventually, he got it, like my wife said. Yes. He wasted almost 20 years Amen. before it could materialize. Amen. You and I are now part of it. Because like you said, my love, he got it. Mm. So then... Still part of lesson number 10 is train a child in the way of the Lord. Show them this exemplary life and they will not depart from it. Mm. The good news is today, you and I, we could read and learn about Esau and Jacob, mm. which later his name changed to Israel. Israel. But God has come to tabernacle with you. Amen. The dispensational covenants he has done away with but he's now dealing with you as an individual do you know that god loves you as much as he loves jesus hmm. yes that's true that's in revelation god loves you as much as he loves that's jesus insane. and that's why jesus said greater works you can do than what he did so we don't have that issue of parents playing favoritism with god God loves us equally. The Bible says we are joint heirs with Christ. So in this year of 2022, to walk in a covenant relationship with God, to experience the supernatural expansions and the divine interventions in your case, you have to realize that, that you and God have that encounter. What did he tell you to do? That's the essence of the covenant relationship. You do your part, like you've seen, God has been faithful in doing it. Even when Isaac, in passing the baton down to Israel, did not handle it well, but because God was committed to what he had said to Abraham, he passed it on to Isaac, to Jacob. And like my wife said, we are the blessings of Israel spiritually now. Amen. But much more today, God is extending his love to you because Jesus Christ came to die on the cross for you. And that, that covenant, that new covenant is established with you. And where are you in your relationship with God?
whatever your need is, financial, physical, emotional, name it. Like we said, salvation is complete and a total package. Yes. The scripture says, seek ye forth the kingdom of God and all these things will be added unto you. Mm -hmm. So, throw yourself into the hands of God. Through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, that covenant will bring you blessings. And that's what we are reminding you of. And if you have not known him, that's what we are introducing you to. Have that covenant relationship with God and see him turn around your life and give you fulfillment. Mm -hmm. Father, we thank you again even for our brethren that we've reminded them of that covenant relationship they have with you. Mm -hmm. Lord, open their eyes of understanding to know and understand this in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Thank you and thank you so that the blessings will be for our brethren that are listening and us too. Yes. And the glory will continue to be yours in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you again. It's been a privilege to empower you to fulfill your God-given destiny.